Welcome back to Blue Collar Coder. I'm Jack Harrington, and this is another in our Tech A Day series. And today we're going to look at Next.js 9.3. Now, I've been remiss. I should have looked at Next.js a long time ago in this series. It's the industry standard way of doing server side rendering for React. But you know what? Sometimes sloth pays off. And 9.3 just got released with static site generation, which is really cool. And I'm really excited to bring it to you because I think it's a great feature. So we're going to go and take the Pokemon data set that we've used in previous videos and statically generate a site based on that. You're going to dig it. If you're already on Next.js, you're going to want to watch this. Let's jump into the code. Let's start this off by looking at the site that we're going to build. So we've got a list of Pokemon and they're broken down by their type. So here are the grass type, the poison type, and then you can click on any one of these links and go and get a bunch of information about it. Pretty simple, totally data-driven site. So we're gonna use Next for this. So let's set up an app. We're gonna call it Pokemon. And you know what? I'm just gonna jump the gun a little bit. I'm gonna go and grab the initialization for the next gen stuff, because we wanna use that right out of the box. And we'll bring up VS Code, fire it up, and have a look around. Okay, so basic landing page for a Next app. All right, where is that defined? That's defined over in Pages Index. So what we're gonna do is just change the name and then get rid of 90% of it. And drop in a little high there, just to make sure it's working, and boom, it is. Easy peasy. So now let's go back over to that 9.3 page and take a look at get static props. So get static props is gonna be called by Next.js to get the properties when we are building out for a static site gen. So it's an async function. It can return promise or it can just return some data. So let's do it the easy way first and just return some data, add a name in there. That's going to go as a prop to the component. And we can just drop that in there. Easy peasy. So I'm going to bring in some Pokemon data and we can have a look at that. Pretty simple stuff. Have an ID, name, the type, which is what we're going to break up the home page based on, and then some data around hit points and attack and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's bring in FS, because we're just going to use the file system for this. Now, you could use a service, but I'm just going to use the file system to keep it easy and have it all available to you in GitHub, which, of course, it is. So we're returning a promise. If there's an error, then we reject it. Otherwise, we're going to turn that data buffer into a string and parse it and then just pass it on to the component. Uh, so let's see what it looks like by just stringifying it in the component. Let's see what we get. Oh, that's lovely. We should just leave it like that. All right, let's go and iterate through those Pokemon and break it down by type. Create a type map. Go through all the Pokemon, grab their types, which is an array, actually. So let's go and iterate through each one of the arrays. And then we create an array. If there is none already, push that name onto the array. And away we go. Now let's go and iterate through all the type maps and just put out the type. There we go, grass, poison, fire, all that. So what we're gonna do is add a link to href slash Pokemon and then the name, and we're gonna add a component, a special component that will resolve that for us and will create that those pages, but I don't have that yet, so don't freak out. And well, all the data looks good, but let's format it nicely by creating a little container. So let's make it all pretty and a container called group that has just five columns. And there you go. But if we click on any one of those, it's going to get a 404, right? Those pages don't exist. So let's go build that. So what I'm going to do is create a new folder called Pokemon because that maps to slash Pokemon. So then I'm going to create a file called open bracket name close bracket JS. And that's going to have a React component in it. But it's also going to have these exported functions in it that are going to set it up with this static site generation. So let's go down and check out get static paths. And this is a way to tell Next.js that you have more than one page here. You're going to give it a whole set of pages based on some fetch during generation time that you're going to do to go get some data. So let's add that in there. And we're going to say fallback is false. So if it's not found, then we don't want to fall back on an index or anything like that. We just want to say 404. So I'm just going to bring in Pokemon JSON here. I'm going to do it synchronously 
just because it's simpler than doing it asynchronously for this example. And I'm going to create a bunch of paths, but I'm going to create them as strings. There, you can also do it with parameters, whatever you want. And I'm going to map that name, that name.english, into slash Pokemon slash. And that's going to tell Next.js the routes that I want generated, all of them. And then going along with static paths, you still need one of these get static props. And that's a function that's exported basically saying, OK, for this route, then go and get all the data that you need. And how do you know which route it is? Well, that comes in as context. It comes in as context.params. So again, we're going to go get that Pokemon JSON data. And then we're just going to go and iterate through the array and find the right Pokemon and return that data. And you'd have the name. I'll put in there name.english. But obviously, we want a little bit more in there. And we have access to it all, actually. So let's just go and bring in a larger template that's got uh, the header for the name in English, H2 with the name in English, and then all of the base items, which include hit points and the special attack and all that, just kind of put out there as divs. And there you go. Really nice. So how do we get this thing into production? So what we're going to do is we're going to add an export to the scripts, and we're going to use next export. But not until we've first done run the build. So we need to run the build first, and then we run the export. And now you can see when we open out, which is where all of the files are generated, we've got an index.html in there. We also got a directory for Pokemon. So let's click on that. And it's got an HTML page for every single item. Now let's go and MPX serve that. And that puts it up on port 5000. And now it runs just like that. And so you could then go and take that output and put it onto S3 or any static hosting site. And boom, you've got your app. So that's really cool. Data-driven Next.js sites in just a few minutes. All right, well, I hope you're as excited about this as I am. This really opens up a lot of doors when it comes to optimizing your site with static site generation. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those down below. As always, uh, I'm up for any new subscribers. Just hit that subscribe button, click on that bell to make sure that you get notified when any new videos are available, which recently has been one every day with Tech A Day. In the meantime, be happy, be healthy, stay indoors, and be safe.